Oh, hi. Give me just a moment, please. I'm almost done here. I've been working on my report now for about three days, and I am almost complete, so just a second. Ah, oh, shh. A UPS is an uninterruptible power supply. Basically, it's a battery backup system that should uh, electricity go off, uh, lightning strike, um, someone in the back room is working on circuit breakers and accidentally shuts yours off, such as a neighbor. Then the UPS basically remains on, keeps your computer system on, and if properly configured, will shut down your computer uh, in case the power outage is longer than a couple of minutes. Some of the other benefits that most people don't consider when purchasing it is if there's a brownout, if there's a blackout, if there's a spark, a UPS also protects your equipment from those. So, a typical UPS that most people have these days uh, in their home is something like this. This is a standard UPS. It's uh, 500 uh, VA. Uh, I'll explain that in a moment what that is, or approximately 300 watts. So this is a typical uh, uninterruptible power supply that you may find at a local retailer. Um, you would purchase something like this if you had a small laptop, maybe one or two monitors to protect. And um, as we said, this is a 500 VA that stands for volt amperage. How do you hook it up? Well, there's the battery backup as well as the surge protection, and then there's just the surge protection. So this surge protection is, you know, smart surge protection, the one that you would get from a small surge strip that has just four or five things on it that allow you to connect equipment. Those are crap. Don't really get those for surge protection, and I don't think most people do. Most people get them just so they can plug four or five uh, pieces of equipment in. The battery backup, as well as the surge protection, uh, is really where the heart of something like this would come into. Uh, the battery backup kicks on when the electricity goes out, whether it goes out for a, you know, a microsecond or whether it's out for four or five hours. This is uh, you know, the heart and soul of what a UPS is really about. Uh, in this one particularly, this one says 500. Now this actually is a 300 watt but 500 VA, the, the de facto standard in trying to figure out how to pick the correct UPS is when they, if they give you the numbers in VA, simply just take 60% of that. So multiply 500 times 0.6 and what you, or 60% and we'll do that quickly. So 500, uh, you multiply 500 times 0.6 and what you'll get is 300 watts even if you uh, consider the fact that your laptop may have battery power, uh, the surge protection on this is excellent. And so even if your laptop is connected to it and there's a storm, this would also protect uh, surges, uh, spikes uh, from entering your laptop, which of course your battery is not going to protect against that. So this is um, something small that I have connected even to my laptop. For those of us that have desktops or very large current drawing equipment, the next thing that we would want is, <laughs> oh gosh, Whew. we may want something like this. This is a 1000 VA power supply. Again, VA and watts are not exactly the same thing. Uh, if you're going to pick up equipment, multiply that by 0 0.6 or just take 60% of 1000 and that's going to give you your wattage. So this is 1000 VA or approximately 600 watts. So um, a desktop, couple monitors, this is something that this would be uh, designed for. Things not to plug in a UPS. Heaters. Your common everyday heater is 1500 watts. Far exceeds what something even to this side can provide. Heaters include toasters. Vacuums. That's a big no-no. Most vacuums consume 600 to 1500 watts. You plug in a vacuum in one of these, it not only could damage this, but any equipment down the line isn't going to be protective if there happened to be a power failure at that time. Printers. Um, 
if you have an emergency and you need to plug in a printer, fine, plug in uh, an inkjet printer. Uh, do not, under any circumstances, plug in uh, a laser jet printer. Laser jet printers, easily 700 watts all the way up to two or three thousand watts. If you plug in a laser jet printer, you're going to damage this. This is designed to uh, safeguard your data and your sensitive equipment. Um, coffee makers, another big no-no. These items are high current draw, they draw quite a bit of wattage, and again, this is a precise instrument. It's designed to safeguard your data. Coffee's not that important. Coffee's not that important. Okay? Coffee's not that important. How do you know that this thing's gonna work? Even, you know, that it says battery good here, the indicator lights are, are saying excellent way to go, you're protected. How do you know? Well, one of the things that I've always done when installing systems like this, whether it's for a server room or if it's for a client, is I unplug it. While everything is on, I unplug it. This is how we're going to test how well these perform. This is what it's designed to do. And we're going to unplug it while this thing is on. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let me just unplug it here. I'm not sure if you can hear in the background, but you can hear this low humming sound. That right there is the transformer working to transform the power from the standard, uh, there's two 12 volt, 7.5 amp hour batteries in here, back into the conditioned 120 volt um, current. And that's why these lights are staying on right now. I've got the light above me, and I've also have three monitors and the lamp behind me. They're all plugged in on this. So again, you can see the load stayed consistent, very low. Obviously, it's saying it's on battery. And you can see this battery indicator right here, basically indicating how much power is left. So an APC, so a UPS like this is going to stay on until it probably reaches a quarter, maybe a little lower, and then it'll just automatically shut off to uh, conserve uh, battery drain. Something like this, I'll keep on for about five minutes. If I got a piece of equipment and I say, hey, I need this on for five minutes, test it with your equipment. Confirm that it works and test it for five minutes. If that's what, you, you know, what you're know, you looking to protect, that's how long. One other thing. These aren't designed to keep your house running and they're not designed to keep your equipment running for hours on end. That's silly. If you're going to need something like that, get a generator. This is designed to protect your data your sensitive electronics from damage during a power surge, a power outage, or your neighbors fiddling around with circuits. So don't th buy one of these thinking, oh, I can run my desktop for three hours. It's not going to happen, and you've defeated the purpose. And if you think like that, you're probably not going to get your stuff protected. Don't plug a vacuum in this. If measuring power and amperage for the devices that you want to protect isn't exactly uh, something that excites you. Uh, APC and a lot of manufacturers that have developed these battery backup systems provide an online web calculation that you can quickly get to and uh, add the products in either by wattage and load or you can add them in simply by the devices. So I'm going to go to uh, apc.com forward slash tools uh, forward slash UPS underscore selector forward slash I'll of course make sure I put that link available underneath this video and from here we're simply going to click on right there let me just zoom in a bit here we're going to just click on home and home office for small business we can uh, decide either by load if we want to specify wattage or amperage or if we're not sure we can select by device let's just do by device right here and uh, let's say for example that I have a, a lap let's say I have a desktop and that I want to back it up so I've got a desktop and uh, a mini tower is perfectly fine. Uh, I've got a large monitor. Let's say I have a 19 inch LCD and it's a pretty powerful station. So we'll just pick uh, uh, an Intel Xeon and um, PCI slots. I've got two video cards and a sound card that I'm currently using. And let's just say that I have two hard drives. Everything else will leave standard and we'll click that to summary. And you'll notice it automatically adds what uh, the standard load is for this type of system. If I also have my networking router attached, simply just select uh, the networking router. You can select by companies that uh, or manufacturers that uh, you know currently make them. 
I'll just put a random one here, put a random model there. It automatically uh, has uh, inputted the wattage for us. It's inputted uh, the voltage that it believes uh, that comes. And we can just you know uncheck all the ones except for the 120, which is uh, currently where I am right now, and then add to summary. And you can see here that it's already added 504 watts. So I don't have to know a lot about electricity, power usage, um, in order to pick the right device for me. I just click save and continue and there it is it's recommending any of these three systems here for uh, the system that I said that I wanted to back up and uh, below here it says the percent match of capacity used so if I purchase the hundred seventy nine uh, dollar one I will be using 80 per 84 percent of the capacity um, what what these measurements of this capacity basically mean is if the power went off with this 84 percent use I might expect maybe uh, six minutes of runtime since this is 58 percent of the capacity of this unit you know more expensive but since it is uh, 58 percent of the capacity unit, I could expect 40 minutes of runtime so I could uh, theoretically have my laptop on continue the work and if 10 minutes later the electricity turns back on hey I haven't even had to shut down at all do not plug a laser jet printer into one of these UPS's because this is what will happen <laughs>